This is the main interface of the first application I built implementing test-driven development. It's an attendance application for activities coordinators within the context of assisted living and nursing home facilities that documents resident participation in daily activities. Here's how it works. We select today's date. We see the schedule of activities. During each of the activities of the day, the activities coordinators are able to take attendance by checking residents in who are participating. We do this for each day of the month. And at the end of the month, we can view this information in reports for each resident. This is the monthly report interface. We select the name of the resident and month and are able to see both their group and individual participation in activities. We're also able to add personalized comments that are used to elaborate on how the resident is doing. The report is then printed and sent to family members of the residents to be able to see their level of participation. Seeing green makes me happy because it represents a history of the development process with each test capturing a part of the infrastructure as it was being built. And it serves as proof that the application functions as intended. I see applications being built in this way as having three main benefits. Number one, you can start immediately on the main feature of your application. The main feature is often the most exciting and motivating reason for building an application. For this build, it was how do I capture this attendance taking workflow as concisely as possible. In earlier videos of this series, I showed how I was working through the process of writing the test for this feature and building out this portion of the application. Number two, new feature, new test. I really like this workflow. You have a new feature, create a new test file and start writing the code you wish you had. I'll sketch out the interface for a new feature and by feature, I mean a new view or maybe even a component. And that would let me think through the data I need to represent and allow me to consider user interaction, which in this case allowed me to build routes, to new views, and even my first JSON API endpoints for my view components. This being my first attempt at test-driven development, I was mainly intending to write tests that would help me get my basic infrastructure for my views and user interactions in place. With that in mind, number three build only what you need. So you have a feature sketched out and you write tests that are specific to the implementation of that feature. The failing tests then tell you what you're missing and you only build what is required to get the test passing. It's beautiful because it's simple. Having to keep so much in your head about what to do next or where do we go from here, all of that goes away. You get to focus all of your attention on the code for the specific feature and can trust that supporting routes, models, controllers, views, etc will be built as needed. Let's take a look at the reports feature to illustrate these two benefits. Authenticated user can view resident report general layout. This was the simplest approach I could think of. Initially, I'm only wanting to get in place the resident list and have a route for the interface. The session variable for location came later on when the client asked for a way to keep the same list of activities for their multiple locations, but be able to have different schedules for those different locations. We assert that residents are being sent to the view. And so for this test, it forced me to get the reports route in place, as well as reports controller, index method, and view. Authenticated user can retrieve group attendance records for residents. Depending on user interaction from within the view component, the component makes an AJAX call to the server and passes along the selected resident and month. To represent that, we create a resident, a domain and activity, a date, and then we schedule the activity, and then check the resident in as attending. For more on these methods on the models, see the videos referenced earlier as well. So we post the date and the resident ID to the report's endpoint. This then hits the show method on the report's controller. We assert the 201 status and then check that the JSON we're passing from the back end to the front end view component matches the format that the component expects in order to be able to represent that data for the group resident participation. Authenticated user can retrieve individual attendance records for resident. This is much the same as the previous test, 
The only difference is that we're now looking at the individual attendance records table for the selected residents' individual activities for the month. Because individual activities was a new feature, I was able to use this test to drive out that functionality. This required creating an individual record table and model, as well as the associated relationships on the model. It was a bit tricky. The tests were my guide and I was able to get it working. If you're curious, take a look and see if it makes sense how I chose to implement this logic. And I provided a link to the GitHub repository in the description below. Authenticated user can view comments for resident for monthly report. For this test, we create the resident and month as we have been. Then we create a comment. This test allowed me to drive out the comment model and database table. So we assert that the comments table has the comment we created, hit the endpoint, then assert the JSON response is formatted as we expect and contains the comment. The final three tests for the report deal with the comment itself and consider the user's action from within the view component for creating, updating, and deleting a comment. Authenticated user can create a comment. We create a resident and date, the same as we did in earlier tests. This time though we hit a new endpoint, reports comment. And this takes us to the store method on the controller happening as a result of the user clicking the add button on the component itself after creating the comment. Then we assert the comment made its way into the database. Authenticated user can update a comment and can delete a comment. These tests are similar to the first. The difference is the logic we're looking for in the store method. And I assume there's a better way, but this was easy and driven out quickly as I created each test to address the three scenarios. So the store method gets the comment matching the resident ID and date. Then there are three conditions to evaluate. What to do if a comment does not already exist in the database and the comment passed from the user is not an empty string. In this case, we set the fields with the proper values from the request and save the comment. A comment does already exist in the database and the comment passed in from the user is not an empty string. Here we overwrite the current comment in the database with the new one passed in from the user. A comment does already exist in the database, and the comment passed in from the user is an empty string. Here we just delete the record. As I mentioned earlier, I've placed the code for the build in a GitHub repository and linked to it in the comments below. If you happen to check it out, you'll notice there's a lot of view component code that I didn't get a chance to cover in any of the videos. If you take a look and have questions, feel free to let me know. I've never made use of the pull requests and that way of communicating in GitHub for my own projects. So feel free to ask questions there as well as in the comments. I'm exploring rewriting the application to make use of Vuex for that single source of truth state management that it provides. I did a video a while back for a real-time proof of concept where I got my feet wet with Vuex and I'll provide a link to that as well. It would be fun to apply that to this application within the context of TDD, so we'll see. This having been my first attempt at building an application with TDD, I didn't go crazy in writing all kinds of tests covering all kinds of scenarios, nor did I make use of any front-end testing tools. But I think it represents a good example of how TDD can help drive out the bulk of the code infrastructure and provide a solid foundation on which you can create some pretty cool functionality. This is an application built to solve the real world problem, which in this case was eliminating the monthly labor hours it took to compile attendance records for these monthly reports for families. And even though it was a build with the objective being just across that threshold of functionality, I'm pretty happy with it. And more importantly, it captures that workflow that the client wanted to automate. So that's pretty cool. They're happy with it. And that that's really what's most important. So overall, a great experience and if you watched some of the earlier videos and made it this far, thank you. This effort is also me trying to figure out how to share what it is that I'm learning and the things that I'm interested in. And it's a fun time to be creating content. I'm working to get better at it and playing around with a number of topics uh, where I get to practice. So there'll be more and I'm looking forward to seeing where it leads. Until then.